Okay, this is quite a severe topic, and I'm just going to impart the stories upon you because I have been shocked, and I feel traumatized by the events that are taking place very close to my hometown and all throughout America. The first victim, her name was Julia Garamani, and she had just graduated law school in 2022. Julia, during the pandemic, was staying with her family out in Greenwich, Connecticut, and she went back to the city because she wanted to pack some things before she headed out on a trip. She texted a number that belonged to a drug answering service, and she asked if they could send somebody. They did send somebody. They sent somebody right away, actually. It took that individual just nine minutes to get to her. Julia was found dead the next morning. The cocaine that she thought that she was ordering was in fact laced with fentanyl. Just a little bit of fentanyl is what it takes to kill any individual. The second victim was Amanda Schur. Amanda Schur was 36 years old and she was also at her apartment alone in New York City. She called the same drug delivery service. The drugs arrived a couple of hours later, and she tried them. She texted the dealer and said that that batch was better than the last batch. She then jumped on for a private patient online consultation from 8 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m., sat down on the sofa, turned on the television, and was not heard from again. You can guess exactly where that story ended. The third victim, I think, is the most traumatizing because he was about to become a father for the first time. His name was Ross Matangi. He was 40 years old, and he left his pregnant partner to go stay in a hotel to get some work done. He was a Harvard graduate, traded derivatives at J.P. Morgan and Bank of America, Before he got a job at Credit Suisse, he had his entire life ahead of him. Very successful. He actually got onto a conference call with his boss simultaneously or around the same time. He was texting a dealer asking him to deliver the goods. He had another call just an hour later with that same boss, and he never made the call. His boss never heard from him again. He texted his sister, actually, and said, hey, I haven't heard from your brother. Obviously, his wife was worried about him and similarly reached out to the sister, and his sister found him the next morning in the hotel dead of an overdose. All three victims across town had partaken in the exact same batch of what they thought was cocaine, but in fact was laced with fentanyl. The story to me is traumatizing. The story comes from the Wall Street Journal, who did a very good job presenting this in a profile piece as they spoke with the victims' families and are bringing this most important issue to the forefront. But the story to me is important because this happened just a couple of years ago in my hometown, very close to the city. Three individuals that I went to school with and that I knew very well that were in the same friend groups as me, one of them who was one of the kindest people that I had ever met, were not working because of the pandemic, had a lot of time, perhaps were feeling depressed and did the same thing. They thought they were partying with cocaine. They all did lines of what they thought to be cocaine, and it turned out that it was laced with fentanyl. All three individuals from Stamford, Connecticut, dropped down dead. The other day, my cousin explained to me that another three victims in Stamford, Connecticut, have dropped dead because of what they perceive to be cocaine being laced with fentanyl. Again, one of the victims, the other two names are pending, I went to university with. I know him. He is in the same friend groups as me. He is just 33 years old. This is happening over and over and over again all across the nation. In fact, in case you're not aware, we are now at a critical point. 300 people, 300 people per day in the United States are dying from accidental fentanyl overdoses. We know this is happening because of the opioid crisis. People are that are actually pursuing fentanyl are addicted to it, are looking for a high because perhaps they were given some drugs when they got a tooth pulled and they were turned into addicts searching for something that could sustain those highs. I don't know how to communicate this message more effectively than to simply say 
that we now live in a society where your children and you cannot experiment with drugs. It's totally different growing up during my time. Nobody was fearful that the stuff that they were consuming was going to be laced with fentanyl, right? I understand that children want to experiment. It's a part of them trying to, pur- to pursue their freedom. You drink before you're allowed to. I certainly did. I didn't wait until I was 21 years old. You have kids that go to college and they do drugs for a little bit before they get their lives together when they're adults. It no longer is one of those things where you have to be addicted to the drug. You can just be experimenting for your first time, as many people are, and you can drop dead and have your entire life taken away from you. This message has to be communicated effectively to all teenagers right now. You have to make them aware that this is one of the scariest things, one of the scariest crises that I've ever seen in my life taking place in America. We talk about people that are dying of COVID and we have a ticker every single day across the mainstream media trying to make us fearful that if you get COVID, you will die. And what happens? We all react. People are locking themselves at home. People are wearing masks. There are people today that even though they are not required to wear masks, still choose to do it because they are that traumatized by the numbers that were on their screens. Why isn't the media trying to communicate the same dangers when it comes to fentanyl? That woman, the partner of Ross Matangi, gave birth just three short weeks after her partner was found dead in a hotel room. And my heart breaks for her. You can't even imagine what she went through, having to experience the juxtaposition of emotions, at first being so elated that her son was brought into the world, a healthy baby boy, but then realizing the tremendous sadness that her son will never know his father because of a quick decision that took place in a hotel room. Her entire life is forever changed. Her son's life is now forever changed. As I said, this is happening all across America. And it seems that the mainstream media is not impressing enough how serious of a crisis that we are facing. So let me give you guys some statistics so you can tether yourself to that reality. The latest Customs and Border Protection data shows that from the beginning of this year to August, 12,900 pounds of fentanyl has been seized. That is more than for the entire of 2021 in which 11,200 pounds were confiscated and shows that three times more fentanyl was seized in the first eight months of this year than in the entire year for 2020, and more than four times the total for 2019. Drug use obviously increased throughout the pandemic, with deaths hitting an annual high of 107,521 people in 2021, which is up 51% since 2019. Nearly three quarters of those deaths have involved fentanyl. Fentanyl, in case you don't remember, is 50 times stronger than heroin and up to 100 times more potent than morphine. Again, this is very real. This is not imagined. This is no longer the time in America where you could simply experiment with drugs and get away with it, experiment from drugs and and hide it from your parents. Imagine what all of these parents are going through realizing that their children are dying, how embarrassing it is to go through that. When people realize that they were doing drugs and they dropped dead, we have to start having these real conversations in our household because we know the mainstream media is not going to have it for us. And that's all I have to say about that.